Engineers were stumped for decades on how to make motors lighter without losing power, more efficient without costing a fortune, and flexible without breaking easily. Lighter without losing power, make them more efficient without skyrocketing costs, and make them flexible without breaking down too easily. For years, engineers faced tough trade-offs between weight, efficiency, and affordability. Now Korean scientists appear to have found a way to beat copper at its own game, using something entirely different. And the breakthrough didn't come from discovering a better metal. Instead, it came from rearranging carbon at the atomic scale. The answer lies in millions of carbon nanotubes aligned with precision. Before diving into how this works, it's important to understand why the breakthrough matters so much. The motor design relied on today hasn't significantly changed in over a century. The century-old motor problem nobody could crack. Every electric motor in cars, planes, and phones follows the same basic design. The spinning part sits inside coils of wire that create magnetic fields. These coils push and pull the rotor around in circles. This simple idea powers everything from tiny phone vibrators to massive factory machines. But there's a huge problem with it that nobody could fix. Engineers picked copper and aluminum for motor coils because these metals conduct electricity really well. Copper became the gold standard because of its conductivity. Aluminum offered lower weight and cost, but worse conductivity. These two metals dominated motor design for decades. Every car starter motor, every ceiling fan, every washing machine used the same basic approach. Here's the problem that stumped everyone. In practice, engineers have long faced trade-offs. An engineer could make a motor lighter, but that often meant losing power or cheaper or more efficient, but improving one usually hurt the others. This creates impossible choices for engineers. Make a motor lighter and it gets expensive or wastes energy. Make it efficient and it becomes heavy or costly. Make it cheap and it turns heavy and wasteful. Think of it like this. Copper coils add substantial mass to motors, and that mass forces engineers into trade-offs between battery size, range, and cooling. Electric car motors carry significant weight just from the copper wire alone. That extra weight makes the car heavier and cuts down driving range. The motor works fine, but the added mass means shorter trips between charges. Drone makers face an even worse problem. Heavy motors make flying robots crash faster because they run out of battery power trying to lift their own weight. Aluminum motors seem like a smart solution at first. Aluminum weighs much less than copper. Car companies could cut motor weight significantly. But aluminum doesn't conduct electricity as well as copper. This creates a new problem. Aluminum motors heat up fast and waste lots of energy as heat instead of motion. The motors get so hot they need bigger cooling systems. Now the weight savings disappear because of all the extra cooling parts. Companies tried dozens of different approaches over the years. Some mixed copper with silver to conduct electricity better. Others used special alloys or changed the motor design completely. Engineers tested different wire shapes and coil patterns. They built motors with permanent magnets and without them. They tried liquid cooling and air cooling. Every solution fixed one problem but created two new ones. This motor problem affects way more than just cars and drones. Phone batteries drain faster because inefficient motors work harder to make the phone vibrate or focus the camera. Laptop cooling fans waste power and make noise because they can't be light and efficient at the same time. Airplane companies spend millions on fuel because electric systems add unnecessary weight. The problem gets worse with bigger motors. Factory equipment uses massive copper coils that weigh thousands of pounds. These motors waste enormous amounts of electricity as heat. The bigger the motor, the more copper it needs, the heavier it gets, and the more energy it wastes. It's a cycle that nobody could break. Traditional thinking focused on finding better metals or improving motor designs. Engineers tested exotic materials and complex magnetic arrangements. They built motors with different numbers of poles and phases. Some companies spent years developing special copper alloys or aluminum mixtures. Others tried superconducting materials that only work at extremely cold temperatures. Maybe the solution isn't better metal at all. What if the entire approach was wrong from the beginning? What if motors could work without metal coils completely? This sounds impossible because electricity needs conductors, and conductors meant metal for over a century. Korean scientists asked a simple question that changed everything. What if motors didn't need metal coils? They wondered if some other material could conduct electricity just as well as copper, but way much less. This question led them down a completely different path. 
Instead of improving metals, they started looking at carbon. That question led to a laboratory breakthrough that could eventually force engineers to rethink motor design. A fundamental shift, not an instant swap. But what they discovered challenges everything engineers thought they knew about making things move. The carbon revolution that changes everything. The answer came from something thinner than human hair, but stronger than steel. Millions of carbon tubes working as one. These tiny structures called carbon nanotubes measure just a few atoms wide. Each one looks like a rolled up sheet of carbon atoms formed into a perfect hollow cylinder. The walls are only one atom thick, yet these microscopic tubes conduct electricity better than copper while weighing much less. Carbon nanotubes work like tiny electrical highways. Electrons flow through them with almost no resistance at all. In early tests, these aligned carbon cables showed conductivity improvements of roughly 130% compared with copper. Think of it like comparing a smooth superhighway to a bumpy dirt road. Electrons zip through carbon nanotubes without getting slowed down by obstacles. Copper atoms create roadblocks that waste energy as heat. Carbon atoms line up in perfect patterns that let electricity flow freely. Here's the challenge that stumped researchers for years. The question researchers faced was how to produce millions of these microscopic tubes in a way that was practical and scalable to line up perfectly and work together. Individual carbon nanotubes are amazing conductors, but they're incredibly tiny and tend to tangle up like microscopic spaghetti. Getting them to face the same direction and stick together seemed impossible. It's like trying to organize millions of invisible threads while wearing boxing gloves. Scientists developed a breakthrough process called LAST that solves this problem. LAST stands for Eliotropic Liquid Crystal Assisted Surface Texturing, a process that lines up millions of nanotubes so they act as one conductor. This process forces millions of carbon nanotubes to align like soldiers standing in perfect formation. The tubes line up parallel to each other and stretch in the same direction. They create a sheet of carbon that looks almost like black fabric, but conducts electricity better than any metal wire. The process works like this. Researchers grow nanotubes, then use the last process that aligns them into a continuous core. Chemistry and tension lock them together into a flexible cable. The result is a flexible sheet made of millions of perfectly aligned carbon tubes. Next comes the protective layer. Scientists wrap the carbon nanotube core with something called a CCEC sheath. CCEC stands for Core Sheath Composite Electric Cable, which creates a carbon nanotube core wrapped in a protective sheath so the conductor is flexible and insulated. This protective covering works like insulation around a regular electrical wire. The sheath keeps the delicate carbon tubes safe from damage while letting electricity flow through the core. It also makes the final product flexible enough to bend and twist without breaking. This creates something remarkable, a bendable, twistable conductor that carries electricity perfectly. Unlike copper wire that breaks when bent too much, these carbon conductors flex like rubber bands. They can twist into tight spirals or curve around corners. The carbon core stays intact and keeps conducting electricity no matter how much it bends. Here's what makes the physics so exciting. Electricity flows through carbon just like it flows through metal, but carbon offers major advantages that copper simply cannot match. The carbon structure has fewer defects that slow down electron flow. Electrons travel faster and encounter less resistance. This means less energy gets wasted as heat and more energy reaches the motor. Early test results show these carbon coils actually beat copper in the most important areas. In some tests, they conduct electricity about 130% better than copper wire of the same thickness. The researchers measured weight reductions on the order of 80% for equivalent coils. They generate much less waste heat during operation. The motors stay cooler and waste less energy. Think of it like upgrading from a heavy steel bicycle to a lightweight carbon fiber racing bike. Both bikes work fine, but the carbon version goes faster, weighs much less, and requires less effort to pedal. Carbon nanotube motors offer the same kind of performance jump over traditional copper motors. The weight difference creates the biggest impact. Carbon nanotube motors weigh about 80% less than traditional copper motors with the same power output. A copper motor that weighs 50 pounds becomes a 10 pound carbon motor with identical performance. This massive weight reduction opens up possibilities that were impossible before. 
What does this dramatic weight difference mean for real products people use every day? From the lab bench to the garage, electric cars could travel much farther on the same battery, and drones could stay airborne for hours instead of minutes. Because motors could weigh roughly 80% less and waste less energy as heat, manufacturers could choose smaller batteries or achieve noticeably longer range, potentially large improvements, though exact range gains depend on vehicle design and the rest of the drivetrain. The massive weight reduction changes how engineers think about electric vehicles completely. Here's how lighter motors change electric cars. Current electric vehicles carry heavy battery packs to make up for motor inefficiency and weight. Carbon nanotube motors cut motor weight dramatically. This means car makers can use smaller, lighter battery packs while keeping the same driving range. Cars become lighter overall and need less energy to move down the road. Current limitations hold back electric planes and long-range drones completely. Traditional motors are simply too heavy for aircraft that need to stay airborne for long periods. A drone with copper motors might fly for 20 minutes before the battery dies. The motor weight forces engineers to choose between flight time and carrying useful equipment. Electric planes face the same problem, but on a much bigger scale. Heavy motors require enormous batteries that make the aircraft too heavy to fly efficiently. Carbon nanotube motors make electric planes and long-range drones much more practical. The weight reductions that matter most in aviation are the very gains this technology promises. Small electric aircraft could fly between cities without stopping to recharge. Cargo drones could deliver packages across long distances. Personal flying vehicles become practical when motors weigh much less. The weight savings make flight possible where it was impossible before. Flexible carbon motors open up completely new design possibilities. Engineers can weave these motors into clothing or curve them around unusual shapes. Smart clothing could have tiny motors built right into the fabric. Medical devices could wrap around body parts instead of being bulky and rigid. Robots could move more like animals instead of mechanical machines. The flexibility changes what's possible when designing products that need to move or vibrate. The efficiency gains create another layer of benefits. Carbon nanotube motors conduct electricity about 130% better than copper motors in some tests. This means less energy gets wasted as heat and more energy goes toward actual motion. Devices run cooler and don't need big cooling fans or heat sinks. Phone batteries last longer because the vibration motor wastes less power. Electric tools work longer on the same battery charge. Less waste heat also means motors can be packed closer together without overheating problems. Consider two key areas where this matters most. In aviation, drones and aircraft benefit enormously from the 80% weight reduction because every ounce counts for flight time and payload capacity. In consumer electronics and medical devices, the improved conductivity means surgical robots could have more precise movements while heart pumps become smaller and last longer inside patients. Manufacturing costs could drop once production scales up. Right now, making carbon nanotubes requires expensive equipment and careful processes. But mass production typically brings costs down for any new technology. Car companies could build electric vehicles that cost less than gas cars. Consumer electronics could become more affordable while offering better performance. The economics work out when millions of motors get produced instead of just laboratory samples, but the change is an instant. Manufacturing scale, alignment precision, durability challenges like oxidation and moisture risks, and cost are current barriers that must be solved before mass market cars or planes adopt these motors. Korean researchers solved a fundamental problem that stumped engineers for decades. They figured out how to make motors work without metal coils at all. This breakthrough removes the basic limitation that forced engineers to choose between light, efficient, or cheap. Carbon nanotube motors can be all three at the same time. The implications reach far beyond just better performance specs. This technology could reshape how people interact with everyday devices in ways most haven't even considered yet. The breakthrough shows real promise, but faces real challenges. This could be one of the biggest changes in motor design in a century, but it's still early stage and in the lab for now. Picture an electric car with a much smaller battery or a drone that flies far longer. These improvements become possible when motors weigh 80% less and conduct electricity better than copper. 
The technology is currently in an in-between phase. It's too advanced for everyday use, but too expensive for mass production right now. Major companies are still testing these carbon motors in their labs. Carbon nanotube motors offer three key benefits. They're lighter, more efficient, and flexible. But manufacturing scale, durability, and cost remain major challenges that researchers must solve.